Hey guys, Mike the Alpha Hoarder here. I'm very excited to open this card, and I figured since I am, we can have a little chat about dual lands. Now I know dual lands have been covered to death, so I'll keep my input brief, but I figured I'd share my thoughts. First, let's take a look at what's getting added to the hoard. slice anything. Never yet damaged a card, but I am always worried about it. Okay. Let's see what we got. Alright. That guy's nice, but for another time. And we got this guy. Tundra. Black border, dual land. I love the way the spiral colors are framed by the black. There's just nothing quite like it. So, dual lands. They are clear staple in MTG investing. Um, even a revised edition, I'll tell a quick story here. But uh, I know some people are worried about the high print runs on revised. Um, I'm really not. And there's two reasons. I'll get into that. But first, so this is a set that I'm really proud of. Not because these are very nice. I mean, that's a five. Uh, I usually wouldn't keep anything in five. But the reason I love these is because these are my original dual lands from when I played. Um, some of these came from my father, uh, some of them I had, and when I got back into the hobby, um, I discovered grading was a thing. Uh, I went and got them graded, you know, not because you know, not they were nice, like I said, four, yeah, there's something, this guy has a gouge somewhere, I don't remember. Um, just because the grading was so novel to me at, at the time, and I just loved the idea of sort of preserving preserving the cards. So I do have a set here of revised from back in the day that I personally had in my collection. And so I I really love these. Don't know I have two of those. So that is my revised set, and it, these are actually my only revised duels. These are the only ones I have. Uh, I'll show you these in a minute. But um, why are why are the revised duels such a such an important part of MTG finance? Well, in my opinion, it is the healthiest mix of players, collectors, and investors that you're going to find. It is one of the deepest markets. Uh, and the reason for that is because lands are just so general. They're so generally useful um, in gameplay. Um, you know, a card like, say, Wheel of Fortune is, is great, but only if you're playing red. Only if those are the kind of shenanigans you want to get up to. Um, Gaia's Cradle is great, but only if you're playing green. And, you know, that's the kind of, kind of thing you're going for once again. But the lands are just so generally useful and so their playability is just through the roof um, that keeps the players very interested the art here's a stack of unlimiteds the art is the original art from alpha edition uh, and that's a big deal to collectors and to players I think um, Not only that, the the whole dual land concept was discontinued after revised. And so it's sort of the only type of card, you know, you've got your power nine and stuff. Um, 
the, the Dual Lands made it one set further. They made it to Revised. A lot more people got to see them. That nostalgic value is there. The sort of authentic old school look is there. And then they stopped. And so that keeps collectors locked in. And then, of course, anything that's got players and collectors locked in very firmly. There's no reason these are in hard cases and those aren't. Uh, these are actually nicer. Whenever you got players and collectors locked in very firmly, then that is a great space for investors. You know, when you've got when you've got strong demand, you know, when your when your supply demand is in good shape, that's where investors belong. And that's why I'm not worried about the high print runs. So supply demand is not in a bad place, even with revised. These are a couple of my nicer unlimited duels. As of a few years ago, I looked this up online, I couldn't find great numbers for it, but it's estimated that there's like 40 million Magic players as of a couple years ago. Um, I would suspect that that number is higher. I don't know if that number was pre-pandemic or during the pandemic, but um, I would imagine that number is only higher. So you got 40 million people that play this game. There are only about 300,000 of each revised rare. You know, only, that's a lot, but it's not that much. And um, let's say you just want to look at total, total copies of, of a given card, you know. How many Tundras are out there? Well, there's about 1,000 in Alpha, a little more, about 3,000 in Beta, about 17,000 in Unlimited, uh, collector's edition CE and IE together is another 15,000 and then you've got about 300,000 over here volcanic island is a little less because that was skipped in the in the alpha printing but figure for each each card there's only 336,000 copies which is less than 1% of the 40 million number less than 1% of magic players can get a particular any particular dual land and if you want to play set then that number comes down even more so yeah the print runs are high when you get to revised but I just think it's a very very healthy market I think you've got a lot of participation and another thing that's worth noting especially you know in an unregulated market like this it's a lot less susceptible to manipulation or to buy out or to shenanigans you know um, if you've got if you've got that many people participating competing for particular cards this isn't going to be a binder upgrade for me. I, oh, no, actually, I'm lying. That is going in my binder. So the reason I acquired this is because I only have a slabbed copy, um, which is a nice one. I, it looks nicer than 8.5 to me. There must be something with it. Corners, huh? Well, if you say so. But um, I do want to have each slot in my binder filled, so that's why I went out of my way to try and get a hold of this guy. But uh, in any case, um, you're going to have less shenanigans. The dual land market is generally going to be safer. Uh, there's going to be less speculators because there's sort of less manipulation and all this is less opportunity for really crazy spikes. And so it's a safer market and I just think it's a great metric for the health of the market overall. And this is nothing new that, that I'm saying here. This is This is the conventional wisdom, but I do actually agree with it. Just love that one. Now, the market does narrow as you leave revised, mainly just because of the price barrier to entry. Um, I think most of the people looking for these are going to be collectors um, or really hardcore players that are doing Alpha 40 or you know one of these vintage formats. Um, but by and large, you know, someone coming into the game today is not going to be building play sets of alpha. Uh, I actually don't have any beta dual lands, but beta is in a very similar place. Um, unlimited is a bit more of a conversation. I, I went for it just because I do feel, I do feel there's going to be a ceiling on the revised dual lands and I don't think we're at that ceiling I don't know what that ceiling is exactly but 
I think there's going to be more of a ceiling there because collectors are going to be the ones that are willing to spend the most money. So you do want a healthy mix of players and collectors, but you are going to get a bit of a tail at the high end, particularly high grade cards, um, if you're appealing to the collector base more than the player base. And so when I was doing that math and I was trying to figure out where to build a position, you know, I, I love that I have each of these, but this is not something I can build a giant position in. You know, these are not cheap, not easy to find, not easy to get. These are way easier to get. They're not cheap either, but I mean, comparatively, you know, this compared to this is night and day. Uh, and I just thought there was more upward, uh, upward potential on unlimited versus revised. Personally, you know, this isn't financial advice, of course. But anyway, this is a staple of the game, very symbolic for collectors, and that makes it fantastic for investors. And uh, to me, the only question is which edition you wanna you wanna go for. Uh, I think anybody that wants to be in the investment side needs to have a position. And you know, maybe you diversify a bit. Maybe you try to get a couple of betas and you know to appeal to that collector side and a bunch of revised. But I I really don't think there's a wrong play here. Uh, I know some people don't like the revised ones, like I said, because of the print run. But I don't agree with that. I don't think there's a bad play if you're talking about dual lands. And uh, yeah, so for me, it was unlimited. For me, my I have at least a playset or more of each one in unlimited, and those those I'm, I hold uh, as an investment. I consider those an investment. I've said before, I certainly hope alpha is an investment, um, but due to the speculative nature, the main reason I have any capital in this is because I love them. And the investment side of that is just an excellent perk that I'm happy to have attached to it. But these are much more just an investment. Um, someday this is a position I would be looking to unload when the prices strike right. These I never will because this is just a personal thing with me. But uh, yeah, so that's my two cents on dual lands. Thanks so much for watching the video today. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you could just take a second to wipe down the toilet seat after you use it. It's pretty gross. Come on. See you next time.